before a company goes public, the highest level executives embark on a multi-city tour with their investment bankers to drum up support for the upcoming IPO. This trip is called a roadshow, and since the group will typically visit dozens of cities on a tight schedule, a private jet is the preferred means of transportation. During a roadshow, it's not unusual to visit two or three cities in a single day, so work starts at the crack of dawn. That doesn't mean that the group goes to bed early. No, every night, the bankers treat their clients to wild nights, complete with complimentary gummy bears and coffee. No matter how hard the group parties the night before, the private jet will lift them off to the next destination very early the next morning. Now just for a minute, pretend you are an investment banker traveling with some very important clients on one of these roadshows. Now imagine that you spent the previous night dropping Yogi way beyond your limit, only to be startled out of bed by a piercing 6.30 a.m. wake-up call. In an attempt to get your head and body feeling remotely human again, you scarf down some more warm gummy bears and at least two glasses of coffee at the hotel's breakfast buffet before jumping on the shuttle to the private airport. Within a few minutes of arriving at the airport, your entire group is seated and the plane begins to taxi down the runway. At this point, you might feel a little bit of relief as the morning's blur subsides. All you have to do now is sit back and relax for the one hour flight to the next city. There's just one problem. In your rush to get out of the hotel, down to breakfast and onto the plane, you forgot one very crucial thing. Go to the bathroom. And I'm not talking about a number one. You have a stomach full of last night's multicolored death bears and coffee churning around your lower intestine at 30,000 feet. But that's not the worst part. True horror sets in when you realize that you're not in a spacious 20-person G5 with couches, beds, lazy boys, and a fully tucked away private bathroom. No. On this day, you are traveling on a six-person puddle jumper, sitting shoulder to shoulder with your clients and co-workers. But wait! Somehow, the story gets even worse. Just over halfway through the flight, all the coffee in my stomach feels like it's percolating its way down into my lower intestine. I hunker down and try and focus on other things. What feels like an hour, but probably isn't more than 20 minutes, passes. We then enter what turns out to be pretty violent turbulence. With each bounce, I have to fight my body, trying not to poop my pants. 30 minutes to landing, maybe 45, I try and tell myself. Each jostle, a gamble I can't afford to lose. I signal to the flight attendant, and she heads over towards me. Excuse me, where is the bathroom? Because I don't see a door. I ask, while still devoting considerable energy to fighting off what starts to feel like someone shook a shelter bottle and shoved it up my arse. She looks at me, bemused, and says, Well, we don't really have one, per se. She continues, Technically, we have one, but it's really just for emergencies. Don't worry, we're landing shortly anyway. I'm pretty sure this qualifies as an emergency. I managed to mutter through my grimace. I can see the fear in her face as she points nervously to the back seat. The turbulence outside is matched only by the cyclone that is ravaging in my bowels. She points at the back of the plane and says, There! The toilet is there! For a brief instant, relief passes over my face. She continues, If you pull away the sheet cushion from that seat, it's under there. There's a small privacy screen that pulls up around it, but that's it. At this point, I was committed. She had just lit the dynamite, and the mine shaft was set to blow. I turn to look over where she is pointing, and I get the urge to cry. I do cry, but my face is so tightly clenched, it makes no difference. The toilet seat is occupied by the CFO, i.e. our freaking client. Our freaking female freaking client. Up to this point, nobody has observed my struggle or my exchange with the flight attendant. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That's the only thing I can say as I limp towards her like Quasimodo impersonating a penguin and begin my explanation. Of course, as soon as my competitors see me talking to the CFO, they all perk up to find out what the hell I'm doing. Given my jovial nature and fun-loving attitude thus far on the roadshow, almost everybody thinks I'm joking. 
She, however, knows right away that I am anything but, and jumps up, moving quickly to where I had been sitting. I now had to remove the seat top. No easy task when you can barely stand upright and are getting tossed around like a hood rat at a block party and are fighting against a gastrointestinal Mount Vesvius. I managed to peel back the leather seat top to find a rather luxurious looking commode with a nice cherry or walnut frame. It had obviously never been used. Ever. Why this moment of clarity came to me? I do not know. Perhaps it was the realization that I was going to take this toilet's virginity with a fury and savagery that was an abomination to its delicate craftsmanship and quality. I imagined some poor Italian carpenter weeping over the violently soiled remains of his once beautiful creation. The lament only lasted a second though, as I was quickly back to concentrating on the tiny muscle that stood between me and the molten lava. I reached down and pulled up the privacy screens, with only seconds to spare before I erupt. It is an Alka Scheltzer bomb, nothing but air and liquid spraying out in all different directions. A Jackson Pollock masterpiece. The pressure is now reversed. I feel like I'm going to have a stroke. I push so hard to end the relief. The tormented sublime relief. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. My apologies do nothing to drown out the heinous noises that seem to carry on and reverberate throughout the small cabin indefinitely. If that's not bad enough, I have one more major problem. The privacy screen stops right around shoulder level. I am sitting there, a disembodied head, in the back of the plane, on a bucking bronco for a toilet, all while my colleagues, competitors, and clients are looking at me directly in the eyes. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, briefly comes to mind. I literally could reach out with my left hand and rest it on the shoulder of the person adjacent to me. It was virtually impossible for him, or any of the others, and by others, I mean high-profile business partners and clients to avert their eyes. They squirm and try not to look, inclined to do their best to carry on and pretend as if nothing out of the ordinary was happening, that they were not sharing a stall with some guy dropping his intestines out, releasing smelly, sweaty shame at 100 feet per second. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry is all the ashamed disembodied head can say over and over again. Not that it mattered. <laughs>